For the ones that like playing on the go, but also on the big screen, you can now have HDMI out on your GPI case. Hi, my name is Adam, and today we're gonna continue the series of mods on the GPI case by adding an HDMI out port, Type-C charger, and soft tactile back button switches. Before we start, by the looks of it, the big majority of you are not subscribed to the channel. So if you like the video and you like what I do, please consider supporting and subscribe for more videos. Now let's get into it. First, I want to make the button and the D-pad mod that I made in the Pi 3A Plus video. I will go briefly into it, so if you want a more detailed explanation, check out the video in the right top corner. But basically, with the step drill bit, we need to enlarge the button holes and the button wells. For our D-pad, it's just a matter of filing 1mm from each side and it will fit. I went with an SNES North American theme, as I grew up with a European PAL version of SNES and the North American one was always on my must-have list. The buttons that I used are coming from Retroflag SNES wire controller. They are of a much better quality than the ones you find on eBay or AliExpress and they fit great. Screw the PCB back on the front part of the case and let's do a quick battery mod. This time, we will go on a different, simpler route. I like these 4000 mAh batteries, but these require some battery bay modification, which not a lot of you feel comfortable to do. So in this case, you can use a smaller battery that fits perfectly inside. The only drawback is that the capacity and the battery life will be cut down. If you go with the full size one as I do, Check out this video, in which you can see in more detail how to modify the battery bay. With the battery inside, let's get to our charger. Again, this time, we will use a different charger. This is a TP4056 with a Type-C connector. These are super cheap at around $1 per piece, and they come with a USB Type-C charging port. This circuit can be simpler to mount. The battery goes into the TP4056 B+, and B- respectively, and the plus and minus out pins go on the plus and the minus on the Retroflag PCB. Before we mount the circuit inside the case, let's start modifying our back buttons. I'm not a fan of the small button trouble and the overall feeling of them. The raised 3D printed LNR buttons makes it 10 times better, but the trouble remains the same. Not for long. We will change the metal membrane buttons with soft tactile switches. These feel exactly like the front buttons and the travel on them is twice the size of the original ones. Let's unscrew the backplate to get the access to L and R so we can change them. With a clamp, carefully remove the two buttons which leave us with these two pins. On these two pins, we will solder our soft tactile ones. First. Add some flux on them, so we can pre-thin them. With them prepared, let's get to our buttons. In order to have them flush to the PCB, we need to bend the legs of it. First, cut the two bottom ones as we will not use those, and the two top ones, bend them on the outside like so. Then, add a bit of solder on all four pins, so we can solder them more easily. Bring the buttons near the pins and put the soldering iron on top of them. This will melt the solder and join them together. Do the same for all four points and lastly, let's bend them back together so they are sitting flush with the PCB. And we are done with the first stage of the mod. These feel exactly like the front ones, maybe a bit more travel, but I'm more than happy with it. Next. We will modify the back case so we can house our buttons. So first, remove the buttons with a sharp object and with a Dremel, or more easier, a clamp, cut the inside part of the L and R welds. I went with the Dremel as it's a lot easier for me. Take your time and try not to rush through this part. As it's quite important, you can easily damage the case at this step. After you are done with it, it should look something like this. Let's make a test fit, so screw back the back PCB and let's see if we have clearance for our buttons. I used these in my last build and they feel a lot better than the originals, so they will go again in this configuration. The color is the closest the original I could find, 
links to the sprays and sanding paper in the description. Once printed and finished, I realized that we have to file the inside part of the button in order to have a longer travel. So with a file, take an equally small amount of material from both buttons so they have the same travel. These buttons, in combination with our tactile switches, need a small razor. You can print the pegs that come with the file and adapt them, but easier, just take a Game Boy D-pad silicone pad and cut two of the four contact pads. We will snap these in place on our L and R buttons and make the perfect razor. And we got the buttons ready to make a test fit. And they feel amazing. They got double the travel, making them more usable than the original. And the tactile switches make them feeling exactly like the front buttons. We will pop them in place after we mounted all the parts and close the case. In that way, we make sure that we don't damage the paint on the buttons. Now will be the best time to add our charger into the case. I will want to mount this one in top right corner on the back part of the case. But in order to do that, we need to make the cutout for our Type-C connector. This is one of the easiest shapes to get it right. Just get a round file and a flat one. A full set is just 10 pounds on Amazon on from your local hardware store. Place the charger in its place and let's mark where the cutout will be. With a straight file, start going into the plastic and then round off the edges with the round file. Or better, your set might have this one that has both a curved and a straight angle. Once done, let's make a test with a Type-C cable so we are sure that it fits. Let's bring the charging circuit with the battery inside the case. Now to mount the charger in and to make sure that it's secured of any shorts, we will use an anti-static plastic film under it. Cut it from any anti-static envelope or bag. Super glue it to the side where we will mount the charger and then, with some super glue, add the charger in its place on top of the film. Use a combination between super glue and hot glue as the ports needs to be sturdy enough for a big number of uses and we need to make sure it's secured. Test it again with a Type-C cable and make sure that the battery is charging. The red light means it's charging, blue means the battery is full. Now with that in place, we can start filing the second half. Add some masking tape on top of the PCB so you will not add a lot of dust inside or don't be like me and just unscrew it. With the Type-C cutout finished, all is needed in terms of cabling is to solder the two cables that come from our charger to our plus and minus on the PCB. The black is negative and the red is positive. With them wired up, that is with the jobs that we got to do inside the case. Add the ribbon cable and with the six screws, close it down. Before we go forward, add a generic image to our SD card and test the circuit by turning it on. If all went well, all that is remained is to pop the L and R buttons in. And we are done with the L and R tactile switch modification, the battery and the Type-C charger. That brings us to our HDMI out mod. This is quite simple to do, hardware wise, we have just to make the cutout in the cartridge. So let's get started with it. Bring your Raspberry Pi into the cartridge and with a sharp object or a thin pencil, make the outline of the port. We will use this as a guide. With an exacto knife or a sharp object, start making a hole in the center. And then with the knife, just cut along the lines we made earlier. With all the cutouts, take your time. It's best to be cautious than sorry, and especially with the aesthetic ones. Make some test fits along the way, and you should end up with the cartridge looking like this. Close it down and we are done with all the case modding. Our last touch will be a custom sticker for the cartridge. You can find them on Etsy from Dinierto Designs or Sakura Retro Modding. Links will be in the video description. Let's get to install the image and the script that will allow us to switch between the GPI screen and TV. The script was developed by Matthew G. Switlik and he has all the instructions on his GitHub. Before we start, with the image burned onto your SD card and with the WPA supplicant file added, let's enable SSH, open Notepad and leave the content blank. Save it as SSH.txt on the boot partition of the SD card and we are done. Use the scripts at your own risk. These scripts will basically enable and disable the GPI case script. 
let's install them. So connect to your Pi through PuTTY and let's start. First clone the scripts. Then add the HDMI detection script to RC local that will be at the bottom of the file right under exit 0 line. After you added it press Ctrl X, Y and enter. And all that is remain is to add the RetroPie menu to enable and disable the HDMI. Restart the GPA case and you are done. A small warning is to not enable HDMI without completely powering off the case afterwards. Doing so might leave junk displayed on the GPA LCD screen. The developer did this and the burned in pattern went away after several hours of the unit resting at the room temperature. So it should be fine. After the restart, you will find HDMI enable and disable in your RetroPie settings menu. Let's get HDMI out enable. Here, it will prompt you if your HDMI cable is not detected on boot, the scripts will disable the HDMI. Press any key to continue and let's shut down the system. For my mini HDMI to HDMI cable, I use this super slim one. It's not bulky and is really flexible. Links will be in the description. Let's take both our monitor or TV and let's give it a try. Plug the HDMI in the case, power it on and set your TV to the HDMI output. And we got it working. You can use any image you will like, but I find the Super RetroPie RevD to work the best. To disable the HDMI out, you can do it exactly as we did to enable it. For the best experience, use this configuration with a Bluetooth controller. I found this SN30 Pro Plus to be the most comfortable grip and the familiar layout which doesn't need any explanation. And they look so good together too. Let's try some games, so pair your controller. If you want to check out how, just follow their tutorial. It's super simple and you will be up and running in no time. I haven't made any resolution changes and the image is flawless. Now I can easily switch between handheld and TV in minutes with just one device. And with this we finished this build. We added an HDMI out so we can play on the big screen. Type-C charger so you can use any cable to charge all your devices. Soft tactile switches for a more comfortable play. And the SNES themed buttons and triggers. I think this turned out quite nice. And you will be even nicer if somebody will use it. I already got loads of them and it's starting to be harder to justify them to my wife. So, I will make a few cases, so you guys will have the chance to own one made by me. You will be able to order one through 8bitcustoms.com soon. And that was pretty much it. If you are here by now, please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this one. My name is Adam and I will see you in the next one.